Hi, we're going to talk about <clears throat> solving linear, linear systems. A linear system, a linear anything, just means a straight line. Uh, we're going to talk about solving a system of linear equations. <clears throat> and what that means is, as you'll remember from last semester, we're going to find the place where two lines cross. What is that point? That's what we're going to find. This is the equation of a line in standard form. This is the equation of a line in standard form. Notice I included the answers. We're going to try to find those answers. We're going to be using the elimination method, which is very important. So let's start. Here we have line 1. 8x plus 3y equals negative 11. Line 2 is 3x minus y equals negative 2. My goal is to be able to add these two lines together so that either the x's or the y's equals 0. Well, obviously, this isn't going to happen yet. 8x plus 3x is 11x, and 3y minus 1y is 2y. Oh, what am I going to do? Stop and think. If I had 3y minus 3y, I could make my y's zero out. That's what I want to have happen. All right, so this is my plan. I have to come up with, <coughs> excuse me, I have to come up with a, um, a recipe, just like when I cook. Recipe. Here it is. If I take line one and I add it to line no, to three times line two, then my y's will equal zero. Now, three times line two is going to look like this. Three times three x minus y equals negative two. All I have to do is distribute three times three, 3 times negative 1, because that's really a negative 1, and 3 times negative 2, which will give me 9x minus 3y equals negative 6. So let's add this again. Line 1 is 8x plus 3y equals negative 11, and 3 times line 2 is 9x minus 3y equals negative 6. Now I'm going to add the x's, the y's, and the constants vertically. 17x plus 0y equals negative 17. 0 times y is 0. So what we have here is 17x equals negative 17. To find x, what I do is I divide both sides by the number in front of x, positive 17. x equals negative 1. How about that? 
Well, that's great. That's half the answer, isn't it? We need a point where x is negative 1, and hopefully y is negative 1. We can choose either line when we're using the elimination method once we have an answer for one of the variables, a solution for one of the variables. Why don't I go up to line 1? Although probably line 2 would be easier. 3 times negative 1 minus y equals negative 2. So negative 3 minus y equals negative 2. Now I'm going to add that 3 to both sides of the equation, plus 3, plus 3, So that will have 0 minus 1y equals negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. 0 minus 1y is negative 1y equals 1. Divide by negative 1. Divide by negative 1. These cancel out, leaving me with y. One divided by negative one is negative one. I'm trying to teach myself to make negative uh, to make um, European ones because the whole rest of the world makes their ones like this, and we have lots of students from other countries. Okay, now I've got x equals negative 1 and y equals negative 1. This is the point at which these two lines cross. Although I admit the graph doesn't look like that, that's the idea. Now let's do the same thing here. We're going to have 7r minus 3s equals 23. That's line 1. And line 2 is 3r minus 6s equals negative 9. So I have to come up with a strategy again. This time I think my recipe is going to be, hmm, I would like to have a positive 6 right here so I could say 6s minus 6s. And that would be 0. So if I take line 1 and multiply every number in it, line 1, every number in it by negative 2, this is what I'll get. Negative 2, parentheses, 7r minus 3s equals 23. Now I'm going to scroll this up. Negative 2 times 7, negative 2 times negative 3, negative 2 times 23. That will be negative 14r plus 6s equals negative 46. So now let's come back over here, and what we're going to do is add line 1, no, negative 2 times line 1, 
to line 2. All right, that'll be negative 14R plus 6S equals negative 46. And 3R minus 6S equals negative 9. Negative 14R plus 3R is negative 11R. 6S minus 6S is 0S. Negative 46 plus negative 9 is the same thing as 46 plus 9, only the answer will be negative. So that'll be 55, negative 55. 0 times s is 0, so we'll have negative 11r equals negative 55. And I'll find out what r is by dividing negative 11 into negative, well, dividing both sides by negative 11. And we'll have r equals negative over negative is positive. 55 divided by 11 is positive 5. Now, since we're using elimination, it doesn't matter which of these original lines I use to substitute r equals 5. So I'm going to choose the one that looks easier, and that would be line 2. Three times five. If you hear any purring, that's my cat, Kitty Love, getting in my lap. Minus 6s equals negative 9. 15 minus 6s equals negative 9. All right, I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides, both sides of the equation. That will be 0 minus 6s equals negative 9 plus negative 15 is negative 24. 0 minus 6s is negative 6s equals negative 24. Divide both sides by negative 6. The negative 6s cancel out on the left, leaving me with s. And on the right, we'll have negative 24 divided by negative 6. Negative over negative is positive. 24 divided by 6 is 4. So we should have the point 5, 4 as the, the point at which, or the intersection point, of our two lines, line one and line two. And indeed, our answer agrees with the solution. Okay, now, these are used in real life a lot. This is the beginning of a very high paying career called logistics. All the trucking companies use it. All of the big internet companies use it. This is the very beginning baby step into it. A basketball player scored 29 times during one game. He scored a total of 50 points, two for each two-point shot, 
and one for each three free throw. How many two-point shots did he make and how many free throws? Well, we have to look closely at these problems. There are two different things that we're being asked about. We're being asked about two-point shots, and we're being asked about um, free throws. The basketball player made both kinds of shots. And together, the total number of shots were 29. So if we let x equal, let's write number of, number of two-point shots, and uh, let y be the number of free throws, then we know that x plus y equals 29. Moving stuff off my desk so my cat doesn't dump everything, which would be really spectacularly annoying. Now, he scored a total of 50 points there are different point values. Woo, thunder! There are different point values for each of these kinds of shots. Gee, can I guess the number of points for the two point shots? I don't know. Oh, two points. Okay, however many two point shots this player made, he or she got two points for each of these shots, and one point for each of the free throws. Now these are the points for the two-point shots, and these are the points for the free throws, and we're told that the total points were 50, or the total points, total of points was 50. English is so complicated. We have to find what X and Y are. This time, we're not dealing with straight lines crossing. We're dealing with the number of two-point shots and the number of one-point shots. But the thing is that these are acting like two lines. We can use the elimination method to find out what X and Y are. Let's do it. I'm going to call this line 1 and this line 2. Now, we've got a 1 right here and a 1 right here. Notice that if I had a 1 plus a negative 1, I could zero out my y's. Or if I had a negative 2 plus 2, I could zero out my x's. Let's get rid of the x's for a change. I'm going to multiply all the numbers in line 1 by negative 2. Now this is what I'll have. Negative 2 times line 1 will be negative 2x minus 2y equals 58. Yes, 58, except negative 58. Line 2 will be 2x 
plus 1y equals 50. Now negative 2x plus 2x is 0x. Negative 2y plus 1y is negative 1y. Negative 58 plus positive 50 is negative 8. So 0x is 0. 0 minus 1y is negative 1y equals negative 8. Divide by negative 1. Divide by negative 1. The negative 1's cancel on the left, leaving me with y. On the right, a negative over a negative is a positive. And 8 divided by 1 is 8. So this means that our player should have scored 8 free throws, 8 of the 1 point shots. Now, we can choose either of the original lines. So I'm just going to go to line two since I, I you know, I kind of doctored up line one. Let's go to line two. Two x plus one y and y is eight equals fifty. So two x plus eight equals 50. Subtract 8 from both sides. On the left, we have 8 minus 8 is 0. On the right, we'll have 50 minus 8, and that's going to be 42. So we'll have 2x equals 42, divide by 2, divide by 2, x, the number of two-point shots, equals 21. Now that's the number of individual two-point shots. Each of them was two points. And that's correct, too. So this is one of the really cool things about math. Here, we were finding where two lines intersect. Here, this problem has nothing to do with straight lines, but because the relationships act like straight lines, we can still use the elimination method. Okay, let's see, let's make that bigger again, and I'll try to move this over. Nope, nope, can't do it. All right. A woman bought some large frames, picture frames, for $17 each, and some small frames for $6 each at a closeout sale. So she's got big frames, big frames, and little frames. Sorry, got carried away. So she bought 17 frames. So the big ones plus the little ones equal 17. I vote we let the big ones be X and the little ones be Y. I hope the electricity doesn't go out in the middle of this. All right, $17 each for the large ones. 17 each. And $6 each. I think I'll finish this video. 
and turn off my computer and turn off my Wi-Fi, unplug that. All right, now, how much money did she spend? Spend. She spent $168. So she spent $17 for each of these and $6 for each of these. And that added up to 168. So this is going to be our problem. Line one will be x plus y equals 17. And line two will be 17x plus 6y equals 168. I am, you know, you want to think about your recipe. I could multiply all the numbers in line 1 by 17, but ooh, let's go for the smaller number, neg negative 17 rather. I'm going to choose to multiply all the numbers in line 1 by negative 6. And so that will give me negative 6 times 1x plus 1y equals 17. Negative 6 times 1, negative 6 times 1, that's the easy part. Hi, I vote we use the calculator. Hello, calculator. There. Okay. Negative 6 times 17. Enter. Negative 102. So we'll have negative 6x minus 6y equals negative 102. This is going to be our negative 6, line 1. Negative 6x minus 6y equals negative 102. And line 2 is 17x plus 6y equals 168. Negative 6x plus 17x is positive 11x. Oh, let me move down here where I've got a line. Eleven x plus zero y equals eight minus two is six, six minus zero is six, and one minus one is zero. Now zero times y is zero, so eleven x equals sixty six. Divide by 11, divide by 11. Cancel out the 11s, we'll have x equals 6. Okay, now the absolute easiest line to go back to is line 1. I vote for line 1. x plus y equals 17. If x is 6, we'll have 6 plus y equals 17. Subtract 6, subtract 6. That'll give you 0 plus y, which is y, equals 11. So that should mean she bought 6 of the large frames and 11 of the small frames. P.
piece of cake, right? It could be a whole lot worse.